Hey howdy, it's me, Medicated Mark, coming to you from the bunker system located underneath the Art Villa Found, somewhere in the jungles of the Midwest. And today I'm coming to you with no stories in my head, and but I have interesting things to share. That's right, it's another episode of interesting things to share. Um, certainly not as interesting as last week's interesting thing, which was really interesting. So if you missed that, I'm sorry. You can just go back and review it to find out how interesting it actually was. Okay, so, well, we'll just set these records down for a second, so, uh, so we can talk about the interesting thing. Now, this was not my discovery, but this was another YouTuber's discovery that was passed along to me. I decided to take the tip and, and order a set of drill brushes. That's right, a set of drill brushes on Amazon. I got the, the, the uh, you can buy them individually, but I got the kit. It has a variety, it's a variety pack of drill brushes. Now what is a drill brush? Well, a drill brush is a collared brush in a shape. This one has a, a little bit of a round shape. And then there's bigger ones. This is a bigger one that can get into bigger uh, corners. And then you have smaller ones, like these two are almost the same, but they're not, because one's longer and one's not longer. And the, the white one is different than the black one, because the white one is the soft one and the black one is the most hardest one. And then there's a couple you think, well those, how, what would you do with those? Well then you have this one and like my wife said, well, that would be big. But there's a bigger one. So the green one is softer than the red one. And if you use them both together, if you have two drills, you can clean something Christmas ornaments with them because they're red and green. Okay, so what do you do with it? It's just so simple. It, that was the interesting part. This is the more functional part. You put it in your drill, you've got your drill, and you just screw it down, and then you clean stuff with it. Don't know. I know that you would like me to do that. And then it'll be the drill brush challenge. That's right. <clears throat> so, what did I clean? Well, I cleaned the kitchen floor. Now, see, when I bought the kitchen floor, I was smart enough 30 years ago to buy a floor with collaring that would allow me never to have to clean it. <laughs> so you buy a floor, a tile floor, don't buy like a vinyl floor, buy a tile floor that looks so dirty. As it came out of the kiln, it looks dirty that you don't have to ever clean it. So, and gray grout, it has to, you have to put down gray grout. <laughs> Brown grout probably be even better. <clears throat> So I cleaned it with this, and oh, you know, it didn't look dirty, <laughs> but there was a film on it. So now when you walk across it, your tennis shoes squeak a little bit because it's so clean. Your tennis shoes will squeak when you go across it. I did that. I did the, with the softer brush, I pulled the stove out. It's an electric stove. Pulled it out and cleaned all back in there. Ew. It's horrible. Horrible. Cleaned it out. I just had too much energy. Then I waited a few weeks. And then I cleaned the shower stall. Ew. I also built the bathroom so that nothing would, would, would you wouldn't have to clean it again. <laughs> I tiled the whole thing, the whole bathroom, so I wouldn't have to paint it, and I wouldn't have to clean it. But the, you can't, you, you see the mold, so you got to get in there and you drill brush it, and it's just clean as can be. Now, so that's that's how exciting. So these again, the the ones that are around are for corners. For, you know, like corners and along the edges of walls and stuff like that. Highly recommend a drill brush on Amazon. Get your own set today. Now, let's go on to the... Oh, let's just uh, do a knee follow-up. <clears throat> That's right, this will be the last time I mention it. Unless, of course, I hurt myself again <laughs> before next Friday. Um, but about three or four days ago, the knee was like, hey, I'm pretty well healed. and um, The swelling just stopped, and it feels like a regular knee. In fact, actually feels better than the, the good old me or the old good me and I worked out on it all week and uh, once without a sleeve on it and today just a little bit tweaky from it's all the exercise <clears throat> but still it's perfectly fine I'm walking normally again <laughs> before uh, for uh, months of limping so anyway let's go oh and I got the bill for it today that was that was a surprise my wife said, you probably wouldn't have to pay anything. Well, she was wrong. Hmm. Let's hold this one up. 
music to back up by. I, 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 he's, he's sitting in front of what's his face? Who? Uh, there's a vocalist too, Bob Browning. Is that the same guy? No, it's different. Bob Browning on the back. Um. Gee, hmm. I don't. I don't know. Don't even try to figure it out. It probably says what the hell this is. Some kind of instructional thing. Bob Browning is doing vocals for each song on one channel along with the band accompaniment. That'll be so much fun. I don't know what's in here, and I can't. Oh no, this came from an antique mall. That's right. Uh, First Light, Freddie Hubbard. That'll be nice. Can't remember how much these were. Maybe three bucks a piece. Now I found this in a store with a really nice cover. And so, but it, with the whole record just played with a lot of noise, so I had to pick it up again because it's a good, good album. And for a dollar, there's one dealer there that had this record for eighteen dollars, and it's been in their bin for two years, at least two or three years that I've been going there. Nobody, for, they've had it in plastic, so it hasn't been damaged. But I picked up the same record for a dollar. That's right, Bongo, 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 Epson. Preston Epps, that's right, Epson Salts, Preston Epps. This is a fun cover, uh, very kind of folk artish. Uh, here comes the Stanley Steamer Mighty Dixieland Jazz Band, right? Waterbury, Vermont. They have a fan club. Mambo Moves the Gardener, this could be fun. We might have to feature something from that. Errol Gardner, Mambo Moves. George Walker and the Gospel Mellow Tones. That's a fun cover. This was a dollar. This is local out of Dayton, Ohio. Remember Chad Everett? That's right. He's all strung out. He was an actor, right? This was 1971. Chad Everett. I can't remember what he was in. Like a hospital show or something like that. He was like Dr. Chad. Dr. Hanging Chad. What does he do? Man from Nazareth? Nothing. Hey girl. All strung out. That's the one I'd have to choose. Might have to choose it. Might have to feature. Might have to feature two songs. Versatile guitar of Vincent Gomez. I think I have this, but this cover's probably better than the one I've got. Produced by Charles Bud Dant. Arranged by Vincent Gomez himself. That's right. That looks like fun. Man, what they picked this up for a dollar? Can't remember. That's four exciting all new action adventure stories based on the TV show Star Trek, uh, Paramount Pictures, 1975. Power Pack, Peter Pan. It's the originals, yes indeed. It's the originals. It's a, a lounge out album. Lounge album. Oh, I might have to feature this. Shoot, I did. I forgot that I had this one. There's a cover of Evil Ways on this sucker. Roll over Beethoven. For bookings, call Mike Hall. Sweet sax, Freddie Gardner and Alvy West. Saxophone solos with instrumental accompaniment. That's a very fine cover. Very nice cover there. Cannonball Sharpshooters. I don't have this one. Cannonball Adderley Sharpshooters on Mercury. <sighs> Esther and Albi O. Off. All Farum. <laughs> Free just like the wind. There's a better picture of them right there. She's cute. Don Rackle, Racky Orchestra, very truly yours. I had to buy this one again, just in case. It, it's a great cover. It wasn't that expensive. So I picked it up again on Crown Records. Barry Goldbrath, Brith, Brath, Guitar and the Wind, Mood Jazz and Hi-Fi, Guitar with Flute and Orchestra. Hmm. Might have to feature some of this. There's too many good records in this stack today. You can see that, can't you? Uh, just looking for uh, titles. I don't really. Uh, 
uh, dance percussion around the world, cha 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 with Peter Terrence. Oh, budgety budget. Ooh, one strand had to pick it up. Red, white, and the blues. Red, white, and the blues. Tony Barra and his quintet. Tony Barra and his quintet. There's a photograph of Tony in the back. The new beats. Run, baby, run. Oh my God. Ooh, what's hickory? I have no idea, but I'm going to turn this over so you can get a better look at. Ooh, they do a cover of Can't Get No Satisfaction. Uh, might have to feature this one too. Oh my God. But there's the guys on the back, right? Look at, look at that guy. He looks like he's made up like a comedian, but he's not. It is not the guy from Slade who also looked uh, kind of goofy, right? It, oh, it's just amazing. I don't know. Anyway. Patty Page on stage. It's a co live concert with Patty Page singing live. <sighs> Leeds Combo. Everybody loves to. Bill Ramal and his combo. It's a, it's a great, great cover. It's a very graphic, fun, vibrant, energetic cover. Buddy Colette, man of many parts. And there he is. There's many uh, images on him. I don't think it's not just necessarily just parts. There's just many Buddy Colettes. And he's a terrific uh, musician. And this is a contemporary record. He's in 1956. That's going to be fun. Hmm. Johnny Hammond Smith, Soul Flowers. Is that his name? Hammond. That's not his name. That's that's the instrument he plays. I betcha. Not his middle name. 1968. And last but not least, on the bottom of the stack, it's Sax Gone Latin with George All on capital. And there's a fun cover. Sax Gone Latin, and there's a Photograph, you never see a photograph of George All until you came here today to look at interesting things I have to share. That's right. Fade to black, go to the musical sample. Thank you. Bye.